Welcome to today's session, Digitally Transforming Your HR Department. My name is Dave Jones, and I'm delighted to be joined today by Anthony Biondi and Michelle Kermas. Hi, both. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Just to introduce everyone properly, um, Anthony is an experienced solutions consultant with over 14 years of working with businesses across many verticals to implement and help them gui help guide them in their digital journey. Anthony heads Crown's ECM division and is looking to create a team there to support Crown customers, not just at the very beginning of that digital journey, but all the way through. Michelle Kermath is an experienced business and solutions consultant with a demonstrated history of working in the information technology and services industry. Michelle has a diverse industry background and knowledge with skills in business analysis, technology and solution management, process re-engineering, information and content management. Two fantastic speakers, really looking forward to diving into some of the challenges and some of the benefits that HR departments uh, experience and can see. So let's kick the conversation off today. Anthony, let's, let's come to you first if we can. So what are some of the information management related challenges faced by HR departments and those HR leaders today? Yeah, uh, and they can be divided up into multiple different categories, I feel, but um, principally it's having a lot more control over how you engage both with your existing employees, whether that be um, from a management perspective and, and managing appraisals and one-to-ones and you know your basic functionality of holiday requests and approving those things um or or whether it be sharing policies and staff handbooks um being able to collaborate with your in existing in, uh, task force uh, for want of a better term and, and and being able to do that in an effective and efficient way is is one category um the other is is all around recruitment whether that be bringing people in to the business or whether it be because people have left and and both of those have lots of different challenges that don't just impact HR they impact IT departments they impact personnel they impact the HR process itself um, they have an impact on the financial approach that the business goes on you know the more people you're recruiting the more money you need or whether that be for their salaries or whether it be Recruit, recruiting agents. So if I were to summarise both of those categories, I, I would do it using terminology like control and visibility um, of documents, data, processes, communication, collaboration, um, and streamlining that all into one solution. If I, I, would add to, oh, I would add to that. I would add to that. So if, if I look at it from a uh, the challenges for HR, you, I strip it right back to what their processes actually are to start with. So, you know, they need to attract talent, they need to manage those relationships, they need to train and develop um, retention and well-being, their the employee performance. So all of these things are effectively processes and each one of those has information coming in and information going out. So the challenge to that now, as is for a lot of people, is that people are now working very differently. There's a lot of flexibility and remotely in the way people are working. So how do they still get that information and process that information and be and trust that information as part of their processes? So I think that's the, the sort of the wider challenge is how people are now moving differently into a different way of working as well. And that's a big challenge, right, Michelle? Um, so how can digital transformation, if that's even the right term to use, how can that help HR departments address some of these challenges? So the information that they've got coming in and out needs to be um, secure, needs to be shared, needs to be shared to the right people. Um, it needs to be accessible. Um, and, and in uh, HR departments, that data is very, um, you know, it's confidential, it's personal information. So there's a lot of security um, that needs to be applied. So it's about in, it, the technologies for digital transformation. Can in, It's ensuring that you've chosen the right technology and the right processes but putting the people and culture first. So understanding the, the processes, understanding what information people need, understanding who needs to get it and when. So it's all about data analytics and helping those people almost become self-service 
as part of that. So that's how digital transformation can help. It's about going in, understanding the people, understanding the culture, understanding what you need to achieve and then applying the right technologies and processes. Yeah, and, and, and on that last point that Michelle makes, that let, let's not forget, most organisations now um, have some kind of HR technology in place. Very few are doing this manually. Um, and, and we're not by any means suggesting that they're all rubbish and that they shouldn't be utilised. Absolutely not. What our experience tells us is that there are gaps in some of those technologies, um, uh, whether it be going back to the, the two points that I mentioned earlier, communicating internally or the way that you communicate externally. In some cases, we've come across this, and, and by the way, Crown is one of these, and, and we are currently addressing this with our own um, solutions that we're talking about here to improve our own processes internally. We have technologies in place, but they don't talk to each other. So actually what you find is HR people managing multiple different pieces of technology plus the requests plus all of the processing. So having a solution that sits above all of that and plugging those gaps and, and removing as much of the manual intervention as possible is our objective. And, and that 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 comes back to Michelle's point with regards to um, the solutions already exist in your portfolio, potentially. Let's help you understand how you can better utilise them. And if there are any gaps, then let's suggest other ones that can plug them. And an interesting side conversation almost that comes out of this, we're talking about technology a lot here. Is technology the key thing when it comes to making digital transformation work? You're both shaking your head. Michelle, let's come to you first. Um, no, but it's very easy to go to technology first, isn't it? Because we say the word digital, but ultimately what we're what the most important thing is, is to understand where you're coming from. What is your baseline and where do you want to get to? And then all it's about the roadmap that you where you want to get to. So actually you need to sort out your processes first. You need to understand what your people and culture culture need. You need to understand what your customers actually need before you can actually create that roadmap and that journey and it might be that there's no more uh, technology applied it's about working differently around those technologies and getting to that underlying data will help you make those decisions too many people um too many organizations sorry they 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 uh, as michelle articulated quite rightly that they focus on the what the technology beforehand because that seems the easier road um, it well, maybe not the easier road, but the the the, the right thing to do. And, and ultimately, technology forms a massive part of any digital transformation journey. Of course, it does. Um, but but we strongly believe that the why is is where you really need to start. And 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 again, that comes back to what Michelle has touched on: the people, the culture, the technology is already in place. What are you ultimately trying to achieve? Is this something to make your HR? individuals and teams function more effectively and efficiently or is this a tool to be better utilized communicating to your existing employees because the way you're currently doing it is very manual is it a combination of the two is it purely a rec recruitment process thing are you spending hours and hours and hours sieving through cvs and talking to recruitment agents and doing interview after interview and dragging all these expensive resources in management into into very manual processes and again is it a combination of all three of those things that i've mentioned the why is the key question once you've understood the why the what kind of solves itself that's really interesting anthony um you're talking about the why being the important part at the start of this journey. I want to focus now on the how almost. So once someone knows why they need to be doing this, how do they actually go about kickstarting digital transformation within HR? Anthony. I, for me, the, the, the first answer to that question is you've got to find a partner. And, and 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 by partner, what I mean is you, you you've got to you've got to find an organisation that can go on that journey with you because it's a journey that will never end. If a digital transformation project is done properly, it, it doesn't have a stop point. It it will constantly evolve because the world is evolving. It's an it, it, it's a constantly moving thing. Whether that be changing your processes, adding processes to it, new people coming in, new compliance requirements, etc. So. You need a partner and a, and a 
toolkit that can go on that journey with you. So establishing relationships with organizations that don't just come in and try and plonk a piece of technology into your portfolio, but want to understand your business, want to understand the people within it and the processes and the culture, all the things that Michelle has already taken on. So if you've done the business process review, which is our our terminology for understanding the why, and, and that's looking at your existing processes, your existing technology and creating a business case for change. If you've already done that, then the next key thing for me is who's our partner going to be? Not who's our software provider going to be or what piece of technology are we going to buy? Who's our partner going to be? That's my first response to that. Uh, I can I can just add to that. So obviously the why in my head, if I'm, I'm a, um, someone in HR, what does the process look like to me? So the first step is the why, you know, determine what digital transformation actually means for me, for us and for our company. And then looking around internally, getting the right buy in as well internally so that everybody understands what digital transformation means to the organisation and that you're all, whether that be a department, one team, one one area are all on the same page and then for me, it's the process step starts with it's actually quite insular. You're looking at yourselves. What what are our current capabilities um, and how do they then or how far away are they from what digital transformation actually means to me? And then and then and then start plotting that journey. And, and, and what 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 the right partner will do is walk you through those steps and, and take you on that journey with their expertise and with their knowledge of not only what you're trying to do and how you're trying to do it, because uh, but also making suggestions on how you should do things. We, you know, we've done this before. There are other HR departments we've worked in where things that we've learned from our own experiences there may come into play. Like I said earlier, Crown Records Management right now, Crown Worldwide Group right now is looking at their own HR processes and, and Michelle and I are heavily involved in implementing the technologies and processes that we're trying to sell to our customers internally because it's the right thing to do. We've got to improve how we do things. And it's those piece nuggets of information that could benefit you going forward as well by by rec reconciling with the right partners to bring that expertise to you. One of the things that you mentioned was that persuading people that digital transformation is the right way to go, is the right thing to do, is, is a vital part of the process. Who are those key stakeholders within, within the business, within the HR department that you need to convince and what are some of the ways or that have you got any hints and tips for how to convince those stakeholders? Michelle, let's start with you if we can. Uh, the key stakeholders range from um, the people who are actually using it. So HR users, business partners, advisors, um, assistants, um, the actual employees themselves that are, are having the process done unto them. If, for lack of a better phrase, um, and then to the managers, the people who use this data to transform policies and procedures, um, compliance, um, people who sitting in IT data um, analysts and things like that. So all of these people are all stakeholders, but they'll be at different levels. So the first part of a journey, you know, and uh, Anthony mentioned uh, our BPRs, is to assess the stakeholders, do a stakeholder engagement matrix and understand the priorities and involvements for each of these groups so that we know we're touching or they're touching it at the right place and we're getting the right information out of, out of them. So so there's a it, I'd say anybody that's working in a business has probably got some part of a stakeholder engagement um, to play. And Anthony, any tips for getting those stakeholders on board? Um, the, 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 the biggest tip is create a business case. Again, it comes back to the why we work with organizations like ours to define, document what your bottlenecks are and what the benefits of doing this is. And, and, and return on investment can be chopped up into multiple different. It could be a it could be a financial thing. It could be a compliance thing. It, it could be a morale thing. It could be a, an attracting more people or, or retaining the stuff that you've already got. There's lots of different ways you can chop up a return on investment. But, but principally, if, if uh, the biggest tip for me is anybody walking into an executive, an executive meeting saying, I want to invest more in technology has to have a business case. 
Um, and with a business process review, that's exactly what we do. We create a business case that justifies doing something. And, and so that would be my tip. Understand the why. I, I have an added tip to that as well, which which um, goes along with what I was initially saying. But it's, it's a tip is to let them know how much involvement they're going to have to, to put in, how much commitment each stakeholder would have to do because a lot of people go into this worrying about what it means on their time or it means on um, their doing their day job and things like that so actually doing a bit of a stakeholder plan up front and 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 giving that information to people so they can understand their level of commitment um they're, they're coming in it with their eyes a bit wider open which is a which is a good tip and, that, and that, that, that's a very good point michelle i think more and more the objections five ten years ago the the, the objections were very different to, to now, five, ten years ago, what well, I don't need this. Why do I need this? Th that, that doesn't seem to be a conversation any longer. The, 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 the conversation is more along the lines of I know I need to do this for whatever reason or or I feel I think I need to do this. But I'm afraid to Michelle's point that this is going to take months and weeks and, and years to implement and the cost of it is going to be astronomical. And I'm, I'm afraid of committing my resources to this. Um, and, and Michelle's absolutely right. It, it, more often than not, our business process reviews, for example, take days. They don't take weeks. They don't take months. An implementation of a technology process takes weeks. It doesn't necessarily take months and months and months. And, and we can control and monitor the cost of all of those things appropriately before any money changes hand, before any commitment is made. Um, so I guess reach out, have conversations, engage with suppliers like us um, to, to help them give you some insight into, into what resources is going to be required and what time and, and money is going to be required. Fantastic, great answers. So looking at this digital transformation within the HR department, I'm hearing a lot from you both that this is a journey. It's not an individual project. But one of the things that I'm sure the people listening to this will be interested in are some of the benefits that people are seeing from going on that digital transformation journey. Could you give us a view of, of what some of those benefits are, but also where they fall on that journey? You know, what are some of the quick wins that people can expect to see versus things that maybe take a little bit longer to pull through? Anthony, let's start with you if we can. Well, the quick the quick wins are structure. So um, straight away, you've got everything digitized. You've got all records in one location, accessible only by the relevant individuals that that need access to them. This is this is by the way, if if you've made the decision to implement something, your your your, your quick wins are going to be the, the the structure and the control and the visibility of everything associated to an HR process. Now. What you, there are multiple different applications in terms of what you do from a day to day basis within HR. So which one of those that touches is almost irrelevant. The fact is, whether it be all of them or some of them, recruitment, so on, so forth, adding structure is what you get. That that that's some of the best and quickest wins. The, the, the long term ones will make a massive difference to how you approach engaging with existing employees and, and potential employees longer term and staff retention, um, staff attraction, th th those things take longer to build. They give you the biggest bang for your buck um, because as everybody knows listening to this, the most important asset any business has is its people. As cheesy as that sounds, it is the truth. Um, and being able to uh, have a bigger impact on how they operate on a day-to-day -day basis, how your managers operate on a day-to-day -day basis, um, is 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 one of the longer term advantages that you build into or on top of the structure you get from day one. I I, I think Dave, one of the um, quick wins is actually also one of the long term wins. So um, if you start at the business uh, process review, one of the quick wins you get is um, transparency. You you're you've got transparent operations. You know what you're doing, how you're doing it, how you're working, how much it costs, how much time you're wasting, how much resources you're using, you're, it becomes all very transparent. That doesn't change when you go through a digital transformation program, but what you can now start to see is the measure 
and you can start measuring that change in so your your long term goal is still you're still transparent it's still a it's still a win but you've you've got that from the outset on your currently working so you can really start making informed decisions quite quite quickly um one of the um longer goals is you know to support the um what anthony's just said about um staff retention and staff motivation and all of that it's all about long term you're bringing simplicity basically into the tasks you're making um certain the way to work more simple and easy and that just that just brings satisfaction not only to the people who are who are you know the hr users but also the employees that are interacting or self-service it all becomes very simple so all of these things that a digital transformation program in hr can do just makes it easy and that those tasks shouldn't even register with staff or people they should just be things that they do without even thinking about it and that just gives the focus on organizations goals you know all the more deeper and meatier things that hr really want to get their their teeth into um you know, and all of the different ways to focus now and that just gives them that space and that time to do that and let's also not forget um if we talk about the technology for a moment the the, the solution we're talking about in particular didn't wasn't born to just be hr the the, the principles of what we're talking about here you know control and visibility automating processes visibility and transparency of of associated processes and data through dashboards integration into external applications you know core hr systems or crms or finance systems etc all of those apply whether it be an hr system or a finance system or a procurement one or mailroom or multiple other business applications and processes that i haven't mentioned um, and while anybody who's an HR professional listening to this may not be interested in going into the detail of those other processes, when we go back to the business case that we spoke about, you're investing in a piece of technology that will infiltrate your entire business over a period of time. And it also comes back to the partnership that I spoke about earlier. Investing in something that is going to just do that isn't necessarily the right approach. Investing in something that could potentially do that and then multiple other things, because what's gonna happen is organically around in the canteen and around the coffee machines and the, the, the photocopiers, people will start talking about how their processes have improved and that should translate into infiltrating other departments, which means you get bigger return on investment. So um, that's a much longer term approach, but that has to be considered right at the beginning in our opinion, and comes back to the why and the partnerships and the investing in the right things and the right people. I'd like to dig into that a little bit, Anthony, a little bit further, if I can. You mentioned that obviously HR is is a great place to start a digital transformation, but that, that almost becomes a stepping stone to other parts of the business or, or a, a launch pad for other parts of the business. What other processes, what other departments do you guys at Crane work with on a regular basis that, that aren't the HR department? You've got two types of business processes within any organisation. Most organisations have the first type, which is your standard, you know, everybody's got a finance department, everybody's got a mail room, uh, you know, everybody gets post through every day and sending post out. Um, most organizations have co some kind of contract management, whether that be managing um, uh, your buildings, whether it be your suppliers. Most organizations, obviously, we've spoken about HR and the finance, whether that be accounts payable, whether that be credit control. The core business functions that most organizations have is where we typically start. That's that's where we get the biggest bang for our bucks as i keep saying it's 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 the quickest and easiest starting point for any organization but across any vertical there are bespoke processes that are relevant to your business or your industry and we touch those as well because again the same principles of controlling and having visibility of your data and processes and people and how you engage with your customers and your suppliers how you increase your revenue growth how you save money all of those things apply to those specific individual processes whether you're a manufacturing organization whether you're a finance business whether you work in the public sector they all apply so hopefully that's answered the question but i guess the short version is core business processes H A H R finance, mailroom, procurement, that's where we start. Doesn't have to be that way, but that's typically where we start. Um, and then we grow beyond that point. 
And another way you can um, you can look at that as well is actually d just remove the concept of of the process. Some companies might just say, well, I've got all of this, I've got all of this information, or or I have this data, and what what can I learn from it? How can I deal with it better? So it could be that they've got um, like you know, we come we come from Crown Records Management, boxes of information that they want to be able to understand, and how does it end up in a box? Where has it gone through the business before it even got into the box? So how can we then start looking at that data and, and using that information to to actually create a better process? So you could you could start at it from a, an information and data perspective, which I guess is a bit of a mailroom perspective as well. Anthony, we're saying it can be information that's come in through a mailroom or whatever. But you you could take you could take it from a data and information perspective as well. And look at it yeah, I think I think the key message here, Dave, is anybody that's listening, don't get it doesn't have to be that big and shouldn't be that big from day one we would never recommend do everything all of from day one it never works it never goes live you'll spend an insane amount of money and achieve nothing um again it comes back to the understanding the why and that's not just necessarily about one department when when michelle and her team come in and do a business process review for an hr department they will actually absolutely be spending 95 percent of their time with the HR team and the associated processes, but they will also ask questions of the business generically. What are you trying to achieve? Where do you go? Where do you sit within your industry? What's your, you know, what's your projected growth over the next five, 10 years? And if whatever figure you come to, why is it not the one above it? Lots of questions get asked about the business generically to start painting a picture as to where else they could be benefited. But our advice would always be start somewhere where you're gonna get a really big advantage in, in whatever way and but know that what you're investing in can do so much more you've been listening to digitally transforming your hr department with anthony biondi and michelle kermath from crane records management you can learn an awful lot more about everything that we've been talking about today via the crane website which you can find at www.cranerms.com just before we go though I'm going to ask both of you for your top tip or your top hint or tip about how people within HR departments can get started with digital transformation. What's the what's the first thing they need to do to get things moving? Michelle, let's come to you first. Um, I think that one of the things that uh, HR or anybody could could do is that we they there's all these skeletons in the closet kind of concept and you know if they open the door it's all going to fall out and it's going to be a way too too big a task i'd say is like don't be afraid to open to open that door and really understand what is in your cupboard really understand what it is that you've got to that you've got to deal with um and and don't be afraid because actually once you've tidied up that cupboard how much better do we feel so you know that's that would be my top tip is open the door fantastic tip anthony What's your yeah, take? I, I, I echo that. Um, I, forgive me for repeating myself, but understand the why. And, and this might be something that you can do internally. It might be a process that you can manage internally. You don't necessarily have to pick up the phone to us, but, but before you engage with anybody like us, have some kind of understanding, if not as much understanding as you possibly can, as to what your benefits are going to be, um, because that will make the decision making process beyond that point much faster much slicker um with 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 a clear clear path going forward anthony biondi michelle kerma thank you both so much for joining me today we've been talking about digitally transforming your hr department my name is dave jones until we meet again goodbye for now